So this video is going to be all about how to draft a resume for co-op. So what's the purpose of a resume? Yes, it's to get you a job, right? That's the most important function of a resume. But what you want it to be is something that communicates to a potential employer uh, all of the skills and goals and accomplishments that you have accumulated to this point um, that will get you that co-op, the one that you want, and get you the interview. Really, a resume is designed to just get you the interview. Once you're at the interview, uh, it's up to you to kind of uh, put your best uh, self forward uh, so that you're the person that they want to hire. So when you're thinking of your resume, I want you to think of the five C's. I want your resume to be clean. The overall appearance needs to be attractive. So make sure all the margins are aligned and all the text aligns to the margins. You're going to want to make sure that it's clean um, and that it all lines up. Resume white space is pretty important. And so um, make sure that, yes, put lots of text and make sure that the employer knows all the stuff that you've done. But you don't want to cram everything in that there's really no... Uh, white space that's pleasing to the eye. Um, sans serif fonts are the best. Some say Arial or Verdana are the nicest to the eye and they're easily scanned by a computer. Um, and really uh, the periods at the end of sentence or bolts points, uh, I actually recommend eliminating all periods but if you're going to want to put a period in that's fine. Just make sure you're consistent that all your bullet points come with periods. Uh, just be consistent. Be concise. How long should my resume be? That is the question, uh, one of the number one questions I get. It really should just be one page. Um, employers expect a one page resume and so that's really what you should provide them. Um, employers themselves usually only have a one page resume so uh, I don't think they would expect a, a student who's still in college to have more than that what they would. Um, and then remember that um, in this day and age with technology, resumes are often scanned and even sometimes at career fairs and so you wanna make sure that um, they're scannable with the, um, the the hardware and the application that they're using. And so one page is super important. Make sure it's correct. It's got to be free from any errors. This is the best work that you're ever going to produce. At least that's what the, uh, the employer is going to assume. And so make sure all the spelling is correct, that your grammar for the most part in the language is correct. Don't just rely on spell check to catch words because even if you left out a letter it's still another word and spell check would just assume that it's right um, so don't always just assume that spell check in Microsoft uh, Office uh, and Microsoft Word has has caught those things um, use action verbs and be short and to the point and avoid unnecessary and repeated words be concrete be as specific as possible use metrics when possible what I mean by metrics is uh, no, notice under the education section it says top 20% of class or under Applebee's it said served up to 200 guests per evening. Um, under Briarwood Farm it says cultivated 4,000 pounds of crops. And so numbers are really great. Employers love to see numbers. So just try to be as concrete as possible and make sure you credit yourself. Uh, make sure that you emphasize the best of you and be professional with your resume. Don't put, I mean, so, a lot of students will want to put in personal anecdotes about themselves like I'm really good skier or I really like hiking and that's okay you can certainly put personal interest in that's your call but make sure they're they're appropriate in a professional way think some things of note everything should be in reverse chronological order so you're going to list your current education your university of cincinnati first and then anything else comes after that so any other schools like community colleges or other um, advanced uh, education that you had and then high school uh, is going to go in there. Nothing below high school. Uh, you don't need to put your grammar schools or anything like that, but just high school in, uh, in UC is going to be all, all you need. Um, list your most recent um, or current job first. This is a tough part. Um, folks always want to know what one needs to come first. What The general rule is if uh, whatever job you started the most recent, that one goes on top. And then you, that same goes for all of your activities. Whatever activity you started first or, or started most recent goes on top. You should include your GPA. It's really up to you and, and, and include your GPA. If your GPA is above a 3.0, there's no question. O is included. Um, if it's below a 3.0, it's you know grades are really personal. It's really going to be up to you. There are really two schools of thought. If your GPA is below a 3.0 and you don't include it because you don't want to call attention to it, um, you don't want employers to really know uh, that you have a lower grade. But if your GPA is below a 3.0 and, 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 and you do include it because you don't want the employer to assume that it's like a 2.1. And so you always run the risk when you don't include it 
um, that, uh, that an employer might assume it's really low. So if you have a 2.9 or 2.8 and someone is giving you the advice that if it's a not above a 3, don't put it, they might assume that it's a 2.1. And so that would be an inaccurate assumption. And so sometimes I recommend to students, if it's a 2.789, throw it on there. Anything lower than that, it's really your call. But again, at the end of the day, that's really... Um, your decision and what you want to do and what you're comfortable with. Include a comprehensive technical skills section. This I can't stress enough. One of the first things an employer looks at is your grades. The second thing is typically what skills you have. What kind of computer skills are you going to be bringing to um, the, the position? Do you have any foreign language skills that might be uh, of help? Foreign language skills demonstrate a couple of things. One, if it's industry important that you have a certain language, that's great. But also that um, understanding a foreign language is, is challenging. And so that shows that you have dedication to something other than just the industry that you're working in. Um, any industry specific skills? Qualifying your experiences is okay. So some students will like to say, I have some experience with you know, Microsoft Office, for example, or I'm proficient in Excel. Um, you can certainly do that. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, I think you could just put the things in a list of the different uh, skills that you have, and then you can let the employer ask you how proficient or how confident you are in something. My general rule here is if you've ever used it in a meaningful way, I throw it on the resume. Um, it, it can't hurt, um, and, and employers don't always assume just because it's on there that you're an expert in that field. They know that you're a co-op student and that you quite, you haven't quite got all the experiences that, that you're gonna need before you graduate. Label your experience sections creatively. If you can, create a professional experience section or a field of engineering experience section. So if you're in computer engineering, computer engineering experience. And so for example, if you are in computer engineering or computer science, and you uh, worked for your high school's IT department, um, you know, helping you know reimage computers or build computers or what have you. Um, you can create a professional experience section and put that in there. Then eventually, after your first co-op, your first co-op is what goes in there. And so from now on, all experience that you have that's relevant to your profession goes in professional experience. Everything else go under can go under relevant experience. Um, or other experiences or other work experience or something like that. Um, and so those part-time jobs or the seasonal jobs, they can all go in those areas. How do you describe your experiences? Um, all work experience is relevant, whether it's part-time, seasonal, a temporary, an off-the-book sort of thing, you were self-employed, um, some students will, will say, how do I list that I, I worked on my family farm? Um, you know, um, all of those experiences are important and I, I recommend putting them in your resume. Um, once you've figured out what the title is and the employer name and when you were there, you're gonna wanna create a bulleted list of your accomplishments. Not just the things that you were responsible for, not your job description, but things that you accomplished while you were there. And so if you were a server at Applebee's and you served um, guests on the evening uh, d during the dinner uh, um, rush uh, and you served over 200 people in that time frame on, a, on every given evening that you work, that's an amazing accomplishment. I would list that. It's a great metric, um, a number that they can kind of grasp onto. It demonstrates that you are, um, that you've calculated and understand um, the different pieces that goes into serving people. And it's not just saying I serve people food. It's I served over 200 guests in an evening. Um, if you've been promoted, if you've been uh, given extra responsibility, but it wasn't an official job title, this is a great place to put those things. Um, and you know you can add those in those bullet points. Uh, make sure that you're listening to any sort of transferable skills that you think are important. So say if you, you were a server at Applebee's, you work on a team, and so it's a team environment. So you could say collaborated with others to create a fun atmosphere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure everything is written in the active voice and past tense. Don't ever use first person. Don't say I did this or I did that. And you're going to want to use action verbs. Um, action verbs are words that um, excite the, um, the reader of your resume and really kind of describe um, the different things that you were uh, accomplishing. Um, a great resource for action verbs is if you Google the muse.com and just say the muse and um, action verbs, this website will come up. The reason why I like this website is because it breaks down uh, 185 action verbs based on uh, things you would have done on the job. So example, for example, what I've listed here are uh, if you were in charge of a project. So I chaired something, I controlled something, I coordinated, as opposed to I you know, I worked or I staffed or I managed, right? And so we can throw those types of words in there instead of um, 
you know, managed, you know, this project. Um, so try to avoid uh, the word managed, um, you know, try to use the word directed. Um, if you helped someone, don't use that word, try the word served. Um, if you've assisted, uh, you know, on a team, uh, maybe use the word collaborated. And really, to be honest, one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone uses the word worked. Um, anything is better than worked. Uh, some more on responsibilities and accomplishments. So in a responsibility for a different position and maybe say marketing is manage customer mailing list. Uh, an accomplishment would be compiled and maintain a mailing list of 12,000 customers, the center's largest ever. And what makes that an accomplishment is it throws in, throws in that metric of 12,000. So it doesn't just say what kind, you know, that it was a mailing list, but how big it was. And that you noted that it was the center's largest ever. And if that's the case, then that's something you're proud of. You're going to want to put that on there. Um, coordinated artist press releases. That is a job responsibility, job description. But what makes an accomplishment is that you did eight of them. Um, and, incre and it contributed to an increase in annual sales by 14%. And so if you can find examples like that in the work that you've done, that's what you put in those bullet points. All right, so the components of a resume. What goes into a resume? So the first thing at the top, obviously, is the heading. And this is where you're going to put your preferred name. Make sure it's the name that matches what's going to be in PAL um, as closely as possible. If you go by your middle name, but PAL was gonna, PAL was going to list your first name, make sure you put your first letter uh, of your the first letter of your first name, then your full middle name, and then your last name, so that we understand or the employer understands that what's on your resume is still accurate, and PAL is not inaccurate, or vice versa. You're going to want to put a local address. Some students will want to put their permanent address as well. Most employers don't need an address at all. They're not really going to mail you anything in this day and age um, unless it's a contract. But after that, that's an offer for a job, and generally they'll confirm your address then. But you can put a local address. I think that's good form. Put a phone number in there, obviously. That's the most important piece. I recommend a cell phone if you have one or a phone number that you have um, general access to most of the time and that most other people do not. If you share a house with a bunch of people and there's a central phone and everybody uses the same phone and you list that and an employer calls that number, are you certain that the person who picks up that phone is going to be serious when they answer the phone? They're going to be professional and take a message, etc. Or are they going to answer the phone and be all goofy um, and make funny noises um, and not be professional, then it might be, maybe we don't list that number. Um, some students will list their home phone number. I don't recommend that. Um, if you're not there all the time, your parents might answer that phone or uh, whoever is at your own home, your guardian or what have you. Um, and you're really not going to guarantee what they're going to say when they answer that phone or what kind of information they're going to be able to take. So I recommend a cell phone if you have one um, or uh, not that a landline that you have access to pretty consistently. Last, you're going to want an email address. Um, I would prefer the UC email address, but you can certainly put in anything that you want. Just make sure that it's appropriate. Um, I didn't list this on the template here, but you can put your LinkedIn profile. That's optional under there. Employers will generally search for that anyways, but if you put the address there that they know that, you're, that your LinkedIn profile is something that is available and that you're proud of and that you want them to look at it. The next section is always going to be your education. Some students will say, well, I want my experience above my education. That's okay. But generally in a co-op resume, your education is going to come next. Um, you're going to want you to put your institution in the University of Cincinnati, and then you're going to put the city and state. I know it's redundant to say University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio, but that's just how we do things. So to go ahead and do that. Um, you're going to put the degree in the complete major. So don't say BSCE or BS Comp E. Um, you're going to say Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. You can say BS in Computer Engineering. That's okay. B period, S period is fine. Um, or just the letters BS uh, uh, in Computer Engineering is generally okay. I personally like to just spell everything out. I think it looks nicer. It looks cleaner. You're going to put the expected month and year. You don't put the year that you started at UC. Um, you're going to put the year that you intend to graduate. And you're going to want to put the month. Employers want to know if it's going to be the May graduation or the December graduation. That's important for them, especially if they're going to start considering you for a full-time gig. And then you're going to want to put your uh, uh, GPA in there. Any minors or certificates that you're working on are going to go in this section. You can list relevant courses um, that you think are relevant to the profession that you're going to be interviewing for. Um, and then any scholarships and dean's list. You're going to put your high school. You can put AP classes. You can put other uh, accolades like top 10% or top 20%. Um, if, you've take, if you've taken any sort of um, college courses, um, you can list those here as well.
The next section is your skills section. As I mentioned before, your computer skills, any foreign language skills or industry specific skills. Um, we talked about qualifying those, those experiences. You can certainly do that, but you can see here in the example, I don't do that. I just kind of list them all right there for you, and that's kind of how you do that. And then you have your experience section. Um, earlier I talked about creating a professional experience and a relevant experience, but for a simple resume, it's just experience is fine. I threw the Applebee's server information in there. Um, also worked in the Briarwood Farm. Um, didn't know what to call that, so I called myself a farm hand. You can call yourself a farm technician. Um, you can call yourself a crop technician, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but the important piece is you're going to put the name of the employer, the job title, and that's for everything that you've done. Name of employer, job title, and then the month year that you started to the month year that you have ended, unless of course you're still working there and it's to present. Remember everything goes in reverse chronological order, so the thing that you're currently doing or the thing that you finished most recently goes at the top. Description of accomplishments and any transferable skills and metrics go underneath in those bullet points. You can have another section, and generally I recommend putting in any leadership and activities, any memberships that you've been a part of, any activities that you think are, mo are really relevant to the job search, any volunteer work that you've done. Awards and scholarships can go in here, um, and any professional memberships that you might have. Military experience can go in this section, though some students will prefer their military experience to be under the experience section because military is a job, and so they'll want that up there. But if you want it down here as well, you can put it in this section, and then any conferences and presentations that you have. Finally, you're going to want to put your availability. We don't do um, references available upon request anymore. We don't generally do that. Um, but what we do is we list your co-op availability, and you want to list it the semesters that you plan to co-op. And so in this example, it says available for co-op on alternating semesters beginning spring 2015. And so that way the, co the employer knows what semester you're interested in co-oping and that you're going to be doing it on alternating semesters. Just some other note, if you take a look at this resume, it doesn't show an objective at the top. We don't do objectives anymore either, but I uh, did not mention that earlier, so I'll throw that in there now. So that was how to draft a resume for co-op. Make sure when you're drafting a resume that you really put your personal touch on it as well. Don't just do that Microsoft Word sort of um, template that, that I give you. Um, really create some nice design to it and uh, be creative, but make sure that it is clean, it's concise, it's got some really good white space and that it is correct.